Spanish with the Spanish flu. And almost 10 years later, we had a severe worldwide depression, full of misery and perfect for harvesting a drain of gold. And it looks like we're kicking the can down the road to the next depression. I don't want to get political with you, but unfortunately, every evil lizard person at the top is making it difficult not to. Like Aaron, I am too a man of the people, but unfortunately, both political parties suck. And they're wrong. Stop the duopoly. Now let's talk about something important, like my Patreon VIP status. I'd like to ask for an episode on Harry Houdini. Especially how he was a spy for the U.S. and British governments before World War I. And of course, any other strange facts and findings you guys can come up with about him. By the way, did anyone even bring up the cryogenically frozen rock body for the Dark Disney episode? Or did I just miss that little bit of info? Also, have you guys ever seen Mickey Mouse making Swiss cheese? Look that video up. <laughs> Until next time, stay woke, nerds. I couldn't understand about 90% of what he was saying because his voice was so goddamn deep. That was so deep. I don't think that's what it was. I'm pretty sure um, I forgot to remove his ball gag as well. Oh. oh that, yeah. Okay, sense. that explains it. Uh, yeah, because I had trouble hearing him too. Usually I could translate with the ball gag, but I couldn't this time. Oh. I heard he uh, called out the other guy using the voice changer. because He said that's his thing. That's not going to get him a ride on the Montauk chair. Uh, he did bring up a good point. We totally did not talk about the cryogenically frozen Walt Disney. And how they may possibly made the movie Frozen, so when you type in Disney Frozen, it doesn't pop up with him being frozen. It said the movie. Yeah. Oh. Sneaky, sneaky. Yes. Sneaky. Huh. Just like there's going to be a movie called um, Pedophiles. It's just going to go right to that. So you never have to see Epstein or <laughs> Maxwell or Tom Hanks, Seth Green. Do I need to keep going? <laughs> going to be called just Love kidding. of a Child. But thank you, Jake. We'll add the, uh, what was his topic suggestion for VIP status? Uh, Houdini. Houdini. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're definitely going to add Houdini to the topic suggestion list. Fucking love magicians. To the VIP suggestion list, suggestion list, baby. Boom. Yeah. But thank you, Jake. Love you. I'm proud of you. Yes. Much love. Jake, I'm sorry I haven't given you a shout out. <sighs> I failed you. As I sink deeper into my chair in sadness, you're right. We did bond. I knew what kind of dogs you had. We talked about dog training. It was a beautiful moment. I still remember it. You have a beautiful cat, too. But I've just been a little distracted, and you just got to be patient with me. I got a lot on my mind, honey. Just give me time. I love you, and I'm proud of you. And I'll, nice. <laughs> I'll be sure to give you more positive affirmations. See, see, Jake. You know what happened? You let her put that ball gag ball gag in way too early. She got she got what she wanted from you. Oh yeah. Yep. I'll take you for a ride, my man. <laughs> All right. So thank you, Jake, again for the voicemail. So the next voicemail is from Elizabeth, and we're going to play that right now. Hello, Anna, Aaron, and Daniel's son. This is Elizabeth leaving another voicemail for this week. I w first want to um, commend... Aaron on keeping his composure through the Waco episode, I found myself becoming very emotional and um, in general with that, that uh, topic, I get quite emotional and quite um, un un undisposed, like I'm not very um, politically correct maybe. <laughs> so I wanted to applaud you for keeping your composure as well as you did, especially having a personal connection to it. I don't think I could have done as well as you did, so congratulations, and I'm not trying to be condescending, I just honestly applaud you for it. Um, so this week's uh, just going to be a, a short little thing that happened to me back when I, I moved out at quite a young age, like 15, and my brother was um, 
at one point living down the hall from me in the apartment building that I lived in at the time. This is the one that was built on the school ground where an old school was. And um, I was laying on my brother's couch. He wasn't there. And I was just about almost half asleep. And um, I'm kind of a paranoid person. So like I'm always making sure my, my, my uh, windows are shut, my doors are locked, that kind of thing. And um, anyways, I'm laying on the couch half asleep. And in walks this oh, probably about six foot person, completely covered in black, almost like um, grunge wear. Um, and uh, black hair, greasy hair covering his face. He looked in the bedroom and then turned around and walked back out. Me being in the um, half asleep state, I thought, okay, well, it's just my brother, whatever, I fell asleep. Um, had a quick nap and then I woke up and checked my door, the door to my brother's apartment and it was locked. <laughs> so, um, and obviously it was not my brother. I, f I figured it out later that the gentleman, the, the guy that came in was looking for a young girl in the bedroom. Um, I don't know if the girl had perished there or something. I'm still not sure to this day. Um, but I did find out later on that an older gentleman had uh, died in that apartment. It used to be senior apartments, so there was a lot of death in that um, area in the first place. And I don't know what happened to the old school, but it was just kind of interesting that that was like my first full apparition um, of a full person. It wasn't hazy, wasn't anything like that. It was completely a full apparition. So that was kind of cool. It was a little bit creepy, obviously, but... It was kind of cool um, to happen such at such a young age. Anyways, I'm going to let it, you guys go there for now, and I look forward to next week's episode. Love you guys. Bye. Thank you, Elizabeth, for that. That was, uh, I don't know, I don't know how I'd feel about seeing a full, um, like a full figure. I'm still trying to get used to the idea of seeing spirits in the future, because I feel like that's going to be something that happens uh with me trying to get more connected and if you have any tips of how to kind of stay calm in those and how to navigate that that'd be great you can message me on the side i'd be happy to learn a little bit more about how you um kind of work with your abilities thank you elizabeth we always appreciate you calling in and you get i'm always surprised by your stories it's amazing so thank you i love you Yes, thank you, Elizabeth. And thank you for the kind words. You know, it was hard keeping my cool during the uh, Branch Davidian episode and uh, having to relive my people, you know, being murdered by the hands of the tyrannical government. But hey, you know, we got to get through those by talking it through. You know, um, I did have a question. Well, first, I wanted to say uh, thank you for sharing your story. But I had a question, particularly for you and Dell. Have either of you, when together, experienced any paranormal stuff? And have you ever seen a UFO in person? If so, I would love to hear about it. Those are good questions. But yeah, thank you for sharing your stories. Can't wait to hear back from you. And uh, love you, Andel. And I'm proud of you. Yes, thank you for the voice on telling your story. It's like we look forward to hearing that as y'all look forward to hearing that next episode. I love it. It's very true, yeah. Sorry, Dale. I didn't forget about you. Maybe a half a second. I love you. I miss you. I'm sorry I have been on Discord, but I miss you. Read my palms. <laughs> Read my palms. <laughs> Read my palms, Dale. <laughs> They're really sweaty. What does that mean? <laughs> my palms are sweaty and they stink. What the, is this? <laughs> the skin's peeling on it. Have I been using it too much? <laughs> All right. All right. So the next voicemail we have is from either Jesus or Jesus. I'd like to think it's from Jesus himself. Um, I guess we're about to find out. So we'll play that right now. Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm a traveler of time and space. I've been informed that Hans is soon here. Many most don't know, but Hans is my father. He was taken away by the Greys to protect me and my mother while I was young. I've been scouring the universe, looking for Hans, my father. 
hopefully this trail, unlike others, will lead me 